Australia has long been referred to as the land of drought and flooding rains. This vast, beautiful country is made up of rainforests, beaches, mountains, grasslands, the outback, which naturally ebb and flow with the seasons. These days, our diverse landscape is changing faster than usual due to climate change. So how do our weather patterns interact with the warming climate? What does it mean for regular climate drivers like El Nino and La Nina? And what can we expect for future seasons as temperatures continue to rise? Australia's climate is influenced by a range of factors and one of the dominant ones is called the El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle. El Nino is associated with warmer than average temperatures in the equatorial Pacific, leads to dry conditions across eastern Australia, droughts and much warmer than average temperatures across eastern Australia. It also has its opposite phase, its sister called La Nina, the little girl in Spanish, which is colder than normal ocean temperatures in the Pacific. That's associated with much higher than normal rainfall, flooding and colder than normal temperatures in Eastern Australia. For these sorts of events like El Nino and La Nina, they actually have a typical lifetime of only about one year. And so you can go from droughts associated with El Nino to flooding rains associated with La Nina. The impact of climate change on these natural modes of variation is to amplify their impacts Climate change is happening in conjunction with or on top of the natural climate variations like El Nino and La Nina in the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean Dipole. Climate change is amplifying the water cycle so that wet periods, wet seasons get wetter and dry seasons and droughts get drier. Australia's climate has warmed by about 1.5 degrees since national records began in 1910. With each degree of warming, the atmosphere can hold 7% more water vapour. A warmer and wetter atmosphere also provides more energy for weather systems that generate intense rainfall and stronger storms. Climate change is really stoking the fires of extreme weather and natural disasters. They're getting closer together more intense and more damaging. After the 2019-20 fires, they stopped when the heavens opened and we had massive downpours and floods in March 2020. And then we had a, a triple dip La Nina. What happens is there's massive growth, particularly in semi-arid areas. History shows that you get massive grass fires after a triple La Nina in Australia just watching the fire seasons getting longer by months, the period in which you get the hot, dry, windy weather. Fires burning overnight like they do during the day and that's because of climate change. Um, I don't like this. No, out, 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 out. 2019 wasn't actually a black summer. It was a black winter, spring and summer. In 50 years of firefighting, I'd never seen that before. Fires were so hot, the smoke plumes pushed up into the stratosphere and formed their own thunderstorms. Problem was, no rain. So you'd have lightning coming out of the smoke, starting new fires 30 kilometres away. And it's just that energy in the system is making the winds stronger. It's making those pyroconvective storms more likely. Worldwide, we're seeing the weather patterns change. So we're going to get more bushfires. They're going to be more damaging. We'll have longer fire seasons, more properties destroyed. We're going to see more flooding because the La Ninas are more intense and there seems to be a condensing of the pattern, more and more drought, heat waves, everything's getting worse. One thing we know is that with a warmer climate, we will see more extreme heat waves, more bushfires, droughts, floods, and animal extinctions, coral bleaching, and less chance of recovery for our environment. When we look at future conditions and look at climate change projections for Australia, yes, 2019 was the record hottest year across Australia, but a normal year in the late 2030s and 2040s. So, any dry year in the 20s, 30s and 2040s is going to have, unfortunately, 
just as bad bushfire conditions and just as bad extreme temperature conditions that were unprecedented in the black summer. Do you want some good news? If we act fast enough to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases in Australia and to meet the commitments globally to limit global warming to one and a half degrees, to rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions to net zero well before 2050, then we can limit climate change. What the government needs to do is to introduce policies to limit greenhouse gas emissions in Australia. And that means fostering opportunities for solar power and wind power in phasing out all coal mines and fossil gas extraction in Australia and stopping export of coal and fossil gas overseas as well. Australia has a bigger opportunity, a better opportunity than any other country to power Australia with solar power and wind power because Australia has lots of wind. We've got more sunshine than any country in the world. Yes, significant climate change is locked in, but we need to achieve net zero emissions in Australia and globally well before 2050 so that we can stop climate change.